we do begin with some breaking news for you. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy just pulling all five Republican picks to serve on uh, Nancy Pelosi's January 6th Select Committee after she rejected both Congressman Jim Jordan and Jim Banks. Let's check in and listen to what he's saying right now live. The largest caucus the Republican conference. And law enforcement, as well as a leader of a standing committee. Jim Jordan isn't ranking of just his first committee. He's done it before. Jim Jordan has served on select committee and serves on one now. Made it undeniable this panel has lost all legitimacy and credibility. And it shows exactly what I warned back at the beginning of January, that Pelosi would play politics with this. For more than six months, you have a better example of the Senate, bipartisan. Schumer didn't pick who went on as the Republicans. They already have the report done by two different committees. Two main questions. Why was the Capitol so ill-prepared for that day when they knew on December 14th they had a problem? And what have we done to make sure that never happens again? Pelosi has created a sham process. Unless Speaker Pelosi reverses course and seats all five Republicans, we will not participate. But we think it's too important that those two questions, why were we ill-prepared? Why did they know on December 14th? Why would they jeopardize the lives of the Capitol Police? We will run our own investigation. We have law enforcement, we have military, we have doctors, we have people from all walks of life. They want to know the answer. The American people deserve that. They don't deserve politics. They don't deserve destroying the institution. No committee in Congress will work if one person is picking all who can serve. This has not happened before. House Democrats must answer this question. Why are you allowing a lame duck speaker to destroy this institution? This is the people's house, not Pelosi's house. We will do our job, though. We ask to do our job. We want to do our job. I may object to the people that she put on the committee, but I respect her right to do it, just as every leader has done before. Destroy an institution for your own political gain. America expects more and deserves more. With that, I want to bring up Congressman Jim Banks, individual who, deserve, who served his country in Afghanistan, served in a state legislature, serves in Congress, and is his chair of the largest caucus in the Republican conference. Jim Banks. Thank you. I thank the leader first and foremost for his trust that he placed in me as a leader of our party to put me in charge of this Republican effort. This just goes to show how partisan of an exercise we said this was all along, that Nancy Pelosi would take me and Jim Jordan first off of this uh, committee and the rest of us as well by rejecting the first two of us. She knows that we were prepared to fight to get to the truth, to find the facts about what happened on that day to make sure that January 6th would never happen again. But she doesn't want to go down that path. She knows that we're already asking questions in just the two, the first couple of days that Leader McCarthy appointed us to this task, questions that Democrats have never asked about why the Capitol was vulnerable on that day when we had intelligence for weeks leading up to January 6th that told us that something dangerous would happen <laughs> on January 6th. She knew we would fight back against their political games, and that's why she didn't want us to participate in this committee. It just goes to show this is entirely a political exercise on her part. It's a shame. The American people deserve better. They demand answers about January 6th because the, the American people demand that their leaders step up to make sure that it never happens again. But we all know that this is an exercise in politics. It's not an exercise in finding the facts. 
And that's what's, that's what's unfortunate about the speaker's move. It just goes to show, we, it begs the question that all of us should be asking, what is the speaker afraid of? I'll leave you with that. Jim Jordan. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, the leader and Jim are exactly right. This has always been about politics, uh, and the, today's actions of the speaker just confirm that. But frankly, uh, and I've said this before, what else are they going to talk about? I mean, they've been they're so focused on the January 6th committee. What else are they going to they talk about crime? The fact that crime is up in every major urban area in this country. They're going to they're going to talk about the border crisis. I mean, think about this. March was the highest month on record for illegal crossings until April. April was the highest month on record until May. May was the highest month on record until June. Can't talk about that. They're going to talk about inflation. They're going to talk about the fact that the price of eggs is up, the price of milk is up, the price of bread is up, the price of gas is up, the price of an airline ticket is up, the price of a use, the price of everything is up. They can't talk about that. So they're going to be partisan, and they're going to focus on this. But as the leader said, and as Mr. Banks said, I don't think they're going to address the fundamental question, the fundamental question of why wasn't there a proper, uh, proper security presence at the Capitol that day. They're not going to address that. And only one person can answer that question. Only one, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. My hunch is, my hunch is, the reason I want to address that question, my hunch is, is because what happened all last year? The Democrats normalized anarchy. They normalized rioting and looting. And when rioters and looters attacked our law enforcement personnel, when rioters and looters destroyed small businesses, what did Democrats do? They went out and raised money to bail them out of jail, and they continue to talk about defunding the police, and in fact did that in all these major urban areas, which is why crime is up. So they don't want to talk about that stuff. They just want to be partisan. They just want to continue to attack the former president. They want to play their political game. So I applaud Leader McCarthy for saying we're going to do our job. We're going to continue to work and get to the bottom and answer the questions that the leader raised, the questions that, frankly, the American people want answers to. With that, I recognize you. On the evening of January 6th, when we reconvened to take the certification of the election results from our states, I actually spoke with Speaker Pelosi on the dais, and she brought up a bipartisan, bicameral commission to me at that point in time. I introduced a bill to create a bipartisan, bicameral commission. We had some questions about how this would be implemented, and Speaker Pelosi decided instead to put forth her own select committee that we now know is a completely partisan process. It's very disappointing because I think all of us were looking forward to our first hearing next week to be able to get answers to some of the questions that were raised by Leader McCarthy, by Ranking Member Banks, and by Jim Jordan. But we're not going to get those answers in even a partisan manner on this committee because she chose to take the unprecedented step. And you have been watching um, House Minority Leader Representative own, Kevin McCarthy speaking there um, live. He's saying unless frankly, um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi reverses course and seats all five Republican nominees, Republicans will not be party to, quote, their sham process and will instead pursue our own investigation. Those his words once Nancy, Nancy Pelosi announced today that she would not accept uh, Congressman Jim Jordan and Congressman Jim Banks um, as members of the select committee to investigate the incident on January 6th. Let's check in with our man with his ear to the ground, a senior White House correspondent John Gizzi for more on this. Uh, John really was something else. Um, everyone's saying this was an entirely a political decision and it shows that this was a political sham to begin with. Well, when Leader McCarthy said just that and announced he was pulling out of the January 6th Commission, he was essentially speaking for all but a handful of his fellow Republican members. Moments after Speaker Pelosi rejected Congressman Jordan and Banks, I spoke to two-term Congressman Lloyd Smucker of Pennsylvania. He said this proved what a lot of us felt, that it was a partisan witch hunt rather than a fact-finding mission. And he fully supported pulling out of the commission the result eventually taken by Leader McCarthy. Now the questions start. In theory, Speaker Pelosi's eight members, that is seven Democrats and Republican Liz Cheney of Wyoming, 
could proceed with their own investigation. If that's the case, it would add further to the friction and rancor between the parties in the House of Representatives, and its report would immediately come under fire from the Republicans, no matter what it said. On the other hand, if she simply said there will be no January 6th commission on the part of the House, her own membership, particularly the younger, more progressive wing, will be upset with the Speaker, who, as Leader McCarthy said earlier, is a lame duck and almost certainly will be stepping down in 2022. So right now, it's a showdown and the parties are eyeball to eyeball. This reporter's conclusion after talking to members is it doesn't look good for any kind of a commission. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, John. We appreciate it. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.